Dear friends, hello and welcome today to the Airbus Summit. We are in Toulouse and today we're going to talk about a helicopter that doesn't really look like a helicopter. It's called the Racer. This allows for helicopters that will fly much faster while consuming less fuel. That's good. There are the test pilots there. Friends, we are with Olivier and Christophe, test flight pilot and test flight engineer. And behind us, we have the racer, which was previously called the X-Cube. Why does a helicopter have propellers to move horizontally? Isn't that unusual? The advantage of the helicopter is that it's really capable of operating just about anywhere in the world to save lives or to go to hospitals, areas that are a bit confined. But the disadvantage that we've encountered so far with helicopters is the speed. So we racked our brains. So the somewhat intelligent people were able to think about other concepts. And the idea is to really use the helicopter technique to maintain this performance and slow speed capability. But also to be able, once we precisely use the two propellers that we see on each side, to behave like an airplane. The speeds are significantly different from a helicopter which typically reaches around 155.3 miles per hour, while this reaches about 248.549 miles per hour. So now it's not just an improvement, we are really in another universe and so it opens up really different perspectives. So if we go so much faster, it also means that we rest more simply. Because at one time, when I thought we had to go very, very fast, I had heard that the blades might break the sound barrier. There were things like that that were quite peculiar. That's true, exactly. So as the rotor turns, there is what we call an advancing blade and also a retreating blade. So indeed, we have to manage the speed at the end of the blade and the sound barrier is a constraint. But that's not the only one. There's also the angle of the blades and in fact, the subtlety of the concept. But there, it will certainly be Christoph who will talk about it. The best thing is that to go fast, in fact, we have reduced the angle of the blades. That is to say, we have greatly reduced the power of the rotor, okay, because we pass a maximum of power into the propeller. So we keep a little bit of lift with the rotor, but by doing this, we remove a lot of drag from the rotor, okay. And we use the support of the two propellers. These are wings and so that too. As soon as we are at high speed, it participates. It actually compensates for what we remove from the main rotor. So we have a bit of lift on the main rotor, a bit of lift on the wing stubs. 50-50, and at the back, it's a stabilizer. At the back, yes, that's exactly it. We have fins and it's mainly the fins for stability. And so we no longer have the tail rotor. So that's a good point, why? Because in fact, it's an additional constraint and also additional mechanics. And in fact, with the propellers, by playing on a, a differential between the propellers, we can finally manage the yaw angle that is necessary to counter the torque of the rotor at low speed. The key difference is that we use the propellers for three functions on a quadcopter compared to just one on a plane. The first function is in stationary. It will allow to do the anti-torque by playing on the differential of the two sides. As we move forward, we switch to airplane mode and the helicopter will move forward using these propellers. The third function the plane uses on the ground, which we use in flight, is it's to get to high angles very quickly and be able to reduce the speed enormously. We can use a reverse mode on the propellers in order to be able to arrive extremely quickly and break at the last moment to switch to helicopter mode. When we want, we can do it very efficiently. So from memory, the X-Cube, which was the previous prototype, the propellers were pulling now, they have become propelling, they are essentially propelling. Initially, the choice was made to increase protection to be able to board people with the rotor turning. So there were safety issues, so it was decided to go behind the wings. And in addition, we realized that by doing this, we recovered the wingtip vortices with the side rotors and we increased performance and the efficiency of the side rotors by five to 7%. In fact, we won on both games, safety and the efficiency of the side rotors. So concretely, it goes 40, well, it therefore goes almost twice as fast, 40% faster. But does that mean we overconsume compared to a traditional helicopter? If we relate it to the distance traveled, no. We reduce the nautical consumption, but over the distance, we reduce consumption by about 20%. There are several phases in the demonstrator's test program. The first is to verify the initial performances, the concept, the stabilities, to make sure everything is safe. But we are already thinking about specific modes. We will be able to play on. Since we have two engines, we think that if we reduce the power of one engine quite strongly, we can maintain enough speed while greatly reducing consumption. 
These concepts will be tested in the second phase of the prototype's flight tests. What is the current development progress? Uh, I was going to say a little bit. At the very beginning, there was a demonstrator, the X-Cube, which allowed the team in place to validate the concept. We were quite confident about this concept. Here, we are more on a mission demonstration. That's why I'm talking about performance, quality, flight, safety, because we've taken a step. We are on a product that could have a mission application. However, we also have many innovations in mind that we want to leverage and implement to not just take a step, but completely change the world. You mentioned innovation and you think I won't ask the question. The next step in innovations, as Olivier mentioned, could potentially involve shutting off an engine during flight to prove our capabilities. So we have the idea, once we're at cruising altitude, to put an engine on standby to lower the device's total consumption. The challenge is to quickly rearm and restart the vehicle if the remaining operational engine fails. So that's the next challenge we're going to take on with the machine. Uh, how many years of development are we at and what's the commissioning stage? There is currently no official commissioning stage as it remains a demonstrator. It's like a concept park for a car serving as a foundation for the future. Uh, it is designed for more than 200 hours of testing. We have done 10. So we still have a little bit of potential to work. We have a few more years to progress on the topic. I see clean sky is also integrated. What does that signify? We're doing stuff. What does that change? Clean Sky, it's the European organization that helped us, which is our partner for the development, the development of the device, so all the design of the parts. So there are 13 countries, there are 40 global partners, and with the help of Clean Sky, which allowed us to design this device. It was a significant design challenge to bring together 40 partners and successfully create this machine. And now are we developing something like this for the beauty of the gesture, or are there already people who have expressed a desire to be able to buy it? No, uh, to this day it remains a demonstrator, so it's really up to us to prove that we can bring something and be innovative. And to create the need, basically to bring what the helicopter can do today without competing with the plane because we won't be competitive. So it's really about bringing something more than what we can do today with our machines. Here we are still on a cell, what's the size? It's a six-seater, it's eight to ten seats. We are in a cabin comparable to an OC-145, which is used by civil security. The cabin volume is similar. And at the back, there are all the sensors, vibrations, etc. That's where you get all the experimental feedback. Absolutely. There are over 800 analog sensors, plus all the digital traps. I believe there are 1,200 parameters for the total of this monitor, because we are doing big data at the same time, total. The pitot tube at the front remains the same experimental version for now. We didn't have many tuning issues, so we're using the classic. The nose, it has been reworked, but at the base, which helicopter has been transformed? I know it's a cell totally designed for the concept, so with a very sleek profile, no pun intended, which effectively reduces drag. That's why the cabin is relatively thin. Ah, but we can say it, it's still beautiful, it's beautiful. Plus our designers come to work on it. Friends, it's going well. Let's hope for a commercial industrialization of a descendant of the racer by the end of the decade. That's all we hope for and all the happiness we wish for this demonstrator. Let's go. We'll catch the first flight and descend the Champs-Élysées on July 14th, 2030. That would be a great pride, Bourget, this year. Friends, we hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you very soon.